every vlogger's worst nightmare just came true for me. I, uh, oh, excuse me, I recorded a whole video, um, and the audio wasn't synced up. Synced up. I'm very upset because that was a very hard video to record, and, um, normally I'd just be like, eh, forget it, but this time I need, I need to record it. I need this to be recorded. Um, so, I'm going to try to make this short, but the last time I recorded this, it ended up being 16 minutes, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so, I hope to make it through this video without crying, but we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, so, Colleen was the only video this week. Um, I really liked her intro. It was very cute. Um, it made me smile. Um, and I'm sorry to hear that you're doing not the best, but seems like you're doing alright, but I hope you feel better soon, and I, like you said, graduation, it's on its way, don't worry. Well, I'll be graduating soon. Well, not all of us, but you and me at least. Um, and it was really good to hear from you. I'm glad you made a video. Um, she didn't have a question. Um, so my question this week is, um, I would really appreciate it if, um, if you're watching this and you can relate or answer this question, please leave a comment. It would be extremely helpful to me. Um, my question is, have you dealt with grief? And if so, how did you deal with it? And you'll understand why, if you don't already know, you'll understand why I'm asking this question in a few minutes. Okay, so my week. Uh, Friday was my first day of spring break, and I did nothing all day, and it was great, and I loved it. Um, Saturday, I went up to my grandma's. I actually drove up there with my brother, um, just the two of us, which was interesting. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it was quiet, but, you know, whatever. Um, and I got to spend some time with my second cousin, Ellen, which is really nice, because I don't get to see her a whole lot, because our schedules just clash, her being in college and all. Um... So yeah, I had, a, I had a good day Saturday, um, and then Sunday was Easter, and I had a really good Easter. Um, I got to hang out with my cousin Maggie, and we got to talk and watch Little Mermaid and color, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and we had good food and whatnot, and uh, I got to spend time with my family, and it was, it was just really nice. Um, Sunday and Monday are pretty, pretty, uh, far away on the spectrum of good and bad days. Um, Monday was, is by far, was the worst day of my life. Um, so I was woken up at 10 in the morning to my mom talking to me saying that Ellis, my cat, was not doing well. My dad had gone home the night before because, um, I knew that she wasn't feeling well. I could just tell she was not feeling good, and I didn't want to leave her alone for too long. Um, so my dad went home, and it's a really good thing he did, um, uh, because, yeah, he called my mom and said that she's not doing well, and she woke me up, and I'm like, okay, we have to get home. I was supposed to go to my other grandparents' house for a few days, but I knew that I needed to be there because I knew that this was going to be her last day. Um, so I had to, I had to be there. There was no question about it. Um, so we packed up and went home. And I live about two and a half hours from my from my grandma. So that two and a half hour car ride was probably one of the hardest car rides of my life. Um, I spent the the whole thing pretty much crying. Um, we stopped to eat, and I got some fries and applesauce, I know it's a weird combination, whatever. Um, and that's, that's pretty much all I ate all day. Um, that was all I ate all day, what am I talking about? Um, and at one point, when we were about 35, 40, 45 minutes from home, my dad, me and my dad had been texting, um, and he said, uh, you better hurry up and get home. He explained to me later that he said that because, um, she had kind of curled up and she looked really comfortable and, and he thought that she was gonna go. Um, so, 
I broke down crying, and, um, so we got home, and I rushed to her side, and I started, I started crying, I started sobbing hysterically, um, but then I calmed down once I saw that she was okay, um, I mean, not okay, but, like, she wasn't gonna die right that second, um, and basically what had happened is we think she had a stroke, we're not, we're not sure, we didn't get an autopsy, so we'll never know for sure, um, but we think she had a stroke, and basically what was happening to her was that she had an extreme case of restless leg syndrome. She couldn't, um, for a while she couldn't stop walking, like, she had to be moving at all times. Um, but if she, like, stopped and laid down, her legs would be twitching and whatnot. Um, so she couldn't sleep, and she wasn't eating, and she was not drinking barely anything. She did drink a little, but it was hardly anything. Um, and so my dad had made an appointment at the vets for five, and so I didn't know at the time when we got home if she was going to make it to five or not, but she did, um, so I had about two hours with her at home, and those two hours are very special to me, um, because I spent some very quality time with her. I... I pretty much spent the whole two hours with her. Um, probably one of the most special things was that um, she she was never a cat that let she she wouldn't let you hold her. Um, the only time that she ever made an exception to that was when I was sick with pots and she would lay on my chest because she knew that I wasn't feeling well and that was a very special thing to me. But she I took her and put her on my lap and she was able to not sleep but rest for an hour or so and honestly that was just the nicest thing to have her in my arms on my lap for an hour so that that was really good I mean in a very bittersweet way um it of course she would be the cat that wouldn't let you hold her until her last, her dying hours, um, so at 4.30, um, my mom and my brother said their goodbyes, um, and me and my dad took off for the vets. Um, I knew that I had to be there because she had been there for me through everything in my life, um, because literally she had been there for me since day one, and now was my time to repay her um, by staying with her until the very end. And I don't regret that decision one bit. While it may scar me and haunt me, I don't regret it at all. Um, so we got to the vets and I, I said goodbye to her. I told her thank you for everything in the car by myself before we, before we went in. Um, and we went in and we had to sign a form and they got us into a room pretty quick. We were only sitting down for probably like 30 seconds or so. Um, and we got into the room. And it was a little while before, not long, maybe a few minutes. So me and my dad took turns holding her um, because she was letting us hold her. She, she knew. She knew. She knew what was going on. And she said, okay, you guys can hold me. Um, so they put her to sleep. And it was honestly the hardest thing that I've ever witnessed in my entire life. Um, and they were going to let us stay in the room with her after she had passed, but that's not how I wanted to remember her. So me and my dad went out and we, we cried together for a bit before we took off. And um, after, when we were in the car for a while, um, that's kind of when the shock and denial hit me. Um, I just felt numb. Like, I didn't, I'd never, ever, ever felt numb in my life before. And I felt numb in the car. I felt numb all the way home. And for a little bit, when I got home. Um, and then I went up to my room, and I listened to Drops of Jupiter by train. And I cried. <sighs> so that... So that was my denial phase, whatever, um, and the rest of the night I pretty much spent crying. It was, 
it was terrible. But that day was just terrible. Um, I tried to go to bed like really early, like 8.30 early, but that wasn't happening. And I, so I went down to talk to my parents for a bit. Um, and yeah, and I watched some TV with my mom and then I finally was able to go to sleep at 10.30, which is still really early for me, but um, I passed out pretty much and I had a dreamless sleep, which I was very grateful for. I was so worried that I was going to have nightmares about her, like when, as they were putting her to sleep, because it was very traumatic. Um, like I said, I'm so glad I did it, but, like, it was still a traumatic thing. Um, so, that was Monday. Monday was the worst day of my life. Um, Tuesday, I pretty much stayed in bed all day, because I had an excuse to. I was like, mm, well, someone I love very much just died. Um, I think I can stay in bed all day. Um, so I did. And, okay, technically it's 1.30 in the morning on Thursday. So, technically this is on, I am recording this on Thursday, but, um, yeah. But, I, yesterday being Wednesday, I pretty much worked, um, almost all day. I watched videos for a good portion of the day on her picture memorial video. I'm doing two videos. I'm doing a picture one and a video one. Um, just because there's so much of both and I can't fit it into just one video. It would be like 30 minutes long. So I worked on that. Um, and they also they also called us um, told us know that her ashes are ready. Uh, I also ordered a plaque thing that has like her paw print and um her up uh, lock of her fur. However, I did ask that. Um, they shave off some specific fur for me because it was very special to me. Um, so they had her neck fur shaved for me because that was my favorite thing about her was the way her neck smelled and I would, would bury my face in her neck and it smelled so good to me, um, maybe not to other people, um, but they're also including a, another clipping of her fur in this plaque, so, yeah, um, I don't know if that's ready, but I do know that we're gonna pick up her ashes tomorrow, and I wanted to record this video now because I'm calm enough now that I could record a video, and I, uh, mostly I recorded this video for me, this is this is more for me. It's going up on Team Potsy, but it's mostly for me because I want to document what happened, what happened exactly, and, um, yeah. So, uh, if you're interested in seeing the videos that I'm making for her, they'll be on my personal channel, and I'll have a link down there to my personal channel, and, um, yeah. So, um, and I also have one other project planned that I'm going to do for her, but I'll talk about that later. Um. So, basically the one thing that I want you to get out of this video is that if someone has lost a pet, don't think they're going to get over it quick just because it's just a pet. Um, for someone like me who's um, shared a very special bond with a pet, it's going to take a lot of time. Quite possibly as much time as it would take to get over a very close human like a parent or a sibling or a close friend, um, maybe even longer, because a pet provides unconditional love and support and they'll listen to anything you have to say and love you no matter what. Um, so sometimes it can take just as long, so please don't be like, oh, you're still upset over your pet? Like, come on, don't, don't do that. It, it, I haven't experienced that yet, but something tells me that I'm going to what, it might not be directly, but yeah, so um, don't do that, and I also wanted to say thank you to Olivia because um, she's been very supportive throughout this whole thing. Um, as you may know, her dog died a few months ago, um, and her and her dog were close like me and Ellis were, so um, she's been able to offer me some insights as to like what's going on with me and that fact that the pain will end eventually but 
I will never stop missing her. So, thank you for that, Olivia. Um, and thank you, girls, for being supportive and um, for wishing me, you know, saying sorry and stuff. I I really appreciate it. Um, so thank you for letting me just talk about this. I'm sorry if this video depressed you. Um, but I needed to do it. I needed to talk about it. So, um, hopefully you'll see me next week. Um, I'm not sure because, um, next Wednesday I'm getting surgery on my heel cords. Um, so yeah, that's happening. Uh, so I'll be in a wheelchair. Um, I don't know how I'll be feeling next Thursday. But if I'm feeling well, I will for sure make a video and talk about my experience with surgery. Um, and how, also how I'm doing more with grief and stuff like that. So, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, and the last thing I want to say is if you have a pet or a close human, please go give them a hug. And let them know that you love them. Because even though we knew that Alice was going to go soon... It still hurts, and some people don't even know when it's going to happen, so please tell the people and animals that you love that you love them. Okay. Thank you girls so much, and I love you all a lot, and hopefully I'll talk to you next week.